Okay. And so here we go. Um, we are learning the basic principles of oil painting, and everybody said whoop whoop. <coughs> Nobody's going to say whoop whoop. I did. There you go. All right, so uh, this is the fun part. This is the application part. This is the part that you can feel, and it's tactile, and it's fun, and it's movable. Um, I'm, just before we get started on actually showing you, um, guys, this is what it looks like when you cover your palette with one of those, um, with some aluminum foil. If you will turn your eyes back to the far back corner over here, you'll see stacks of newspaper. You'll see a little gray tub that's got aluminum foil in it, and I will keep that replenished as needed. And we've also got palette knives back there for those of you that need to borrow one, okay? Um, as for everything else, you guys need to be getting, bring, making sure you have your oil paints here. You need to be making sure you have your turpentine here. All of those things that you need, brushes. Uh, my suggestion is, why don't you take things out of your box that you don't need anymore, uh, that we did last semester, that you know you're probably not gonna reuse, Take it home, leave it there. That way you have plenty of room in your box for things uh, with oil. All right? Um, that's my suggestion. Uh, last class, I had a whole bunch of people going, I, I love my turpentine at home. And I was like, well, bring it, okay? Bring it, all right? If you I had a big bottle, I have it, okay? And I will make sure that you get it. Um, again, uh, if you have a big bottle and you see that somebody has not bought or purchased one, um, spread the wealth. You're only going to be using a jar for the duration of the project, okay. really. Um, so this is my turpentine in my jar. Notice it's not super filled up. It's about halfway filled up. And uh, that's what it looks like after you've painted for a day. <coughs> Guys, it is not like water. It, this, the colors that are blended in here are not necessarily going to come out and, and appear on your paper. All right. Um, it's a good way to wash your brushes out. You can dilute things with this, and it's not going to change the color very much. So, um, very different than water. Uh, I have my palette here, and I actually took another piece of aluminum foil to cover over this. And, um, and then I'm providing everybody with one of these, okay? So that you can stick all of that inside there and put your name on it and you're good to go, all right? That way you can get to it every day and it's nice, clean, and neat. Remember, don't throw away your oil painting palette at the first day of use because oil paint will keep wet for a long period of time, four or five days even, um, on your palette. Back here, where it says third period, on where you keep your um, boxes, the two drawers, there's drawers right there. That is where you can keep your turpentine jar with your name on it, and that is where you can keep um, your palette with your name on it, um, on the baggie, all right? Um, if you have room in your box, keep it in there. Fine with me. If you don't have room in your box, you're more than welcome to keep it in those drawers, and then we'll chunk it all when, when we're done with the project, okay? Um, and then if you'll look to the very center of the room where my art criticism wall is, there is a block right there. You see it taped off? It'll say third period, and it'll have arrows. That is your section for drying things, so that you can put your artwork back there, and it will dry, all right? Is everybody good on that? That's just the, the pre preliminary stuff. Now we are going to learn how to use the paint. So everybody look up here with me. All right, my first one I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna experiment with direct painting. Now can somebody tell me uh, what um, direct painting is? Awesome, Drew, directly from the tube to the paper. So um, as it is on my palette, that is just fine. Guys, I have a lot of a lot of um, hues on my palette. As long as you have the three primary colors and black and white, you're going to be all okay. All right. So don't stress if you don't have all of these colors. Three primaries, black and white. A lot of these are just blends that I've done. All right. So um, this first one, I've done monochromatic. So I'm using red with black and white um, for my tints and shades. So I've done my background. Always do background first. Okay, because it's really hard to work into the background after you've got all this wet stuff in the front. All right, It's not like acrylic. It's not dry on the front. It's still wet. So if you mess up and run your brush through there, boom, it's over. Okay, You have to redo it. So you just, you just need to do your backgrounds first. So I did mine a really, really dark, um, dark red. Guys, oil paint blends more naturally to our sight than acrylic, which means if I've added black to my red, it's going to come off a little bit violet-y. If I, it, 
all black is usually all black, but like just adding a touch of black into my red, it's going to come off with a slight violet hue. That's okay. That's how I see things more naturally. Okay, so no worries there. So let's start. Let, let's do the sphere here. Um, so I'm going to start with a base red. Okay, here's my base red, and I'm going to fill that up. You do not need a giant chunk of paint on your brush. This stuff spreads and extends really well, so don't go in there and do this giant massive chunk. Oil paint is one of those things that if you let it, it can be intimidating, but when if you say, I'm going to take control of this, I'm going to learn it, you'll, you'll do fine. Okay? You just have to have a mindset that you're going to, you're going to be the controller of these materials. So I'm just going to put my base red in this whole sphere. I'm just going to fill the whole thing up. On there it appears more orange, but down here it's more red. Guys, and notice I'm using a flat brush. Flat brushes are fantastic for crisp edges. Okay, now I'm ready for my darks, okay? I'm going to go in and figure out where my, where my light source is hitting. Guys, honestly, I'm just going to be candid with you. I was not paying attention, and I was just showing how awesome this stuff blended, and I put my shadowing wrong on the, on the cone. But I did it right on the cube, but I did it right on the cone. So, um, Why couldn't you just have it be on Well, you see, you see how the light source is coming from behind, so there's going to be... On the right side, more light value on the shapes than on the left. Okay. And I did that opposite here. So I, did, I messed up on that, and I'm going to go back and fix that later. Okay, So just be aware, Mr. House made a mistake, and he's going to fix it, so you can do the same thing too. Um, all right. So I'm going to go grab some of my black, and I'm going to start down here and just add that in where I know I need it. Wow. And guys, depending on how much pressure you put, this blends so soft. You see that? I mean, it's just soft and subtle. Unlike acrylic paint, this is just going to create a nice, clean blend. Okay. Wipe your brush off really well. Okay. And then come back with some white. Right there where you know you'll need it. Jacob, quit with the theatrics. All right, and then blend that out. All right. I can tell I need a little bit more dark value in there, so I'm going to pull it around. I'm going to grab a little bit more light value and plug that in. And it's just alternating until you get it as light and as dark as you want while still keeping that pure hue for the mid-tone. Alright, so there you have it. Our shadow, um, whatever color you choose to do for the, for the base here, for the ground, you know, you'll just do a darker, a really dark shade of that. Okay? Now, does that make sense to everybody? Pretty easy. All right. Now, let's go over here to indirect. Do, can somebody tell me what indirect does for us? It gives us more of a transparent. Yes, exactly. So indirect is very transparent, very translucent. So the oil paint is diluted heavily with the turpentine. And so over here on your palette, that's where you'll do the mixing of that. Um, I did a complementary color scheme here, and uh, it will be. It, I'll have it labeled what you need to do on the board, um, and and you saw that yesterday, and you'll see it again today. So I'm doing yellow and violet. I'm doing my my background violet and my foreground violet, and I'm going to do all my shapes yellow. So I have a complementary color scheme. Um, I'm going to start with my base yellow. Uh, let's go over here and do the. Um, let's do the cone. The um, yeah, not the cone. 
the cylinder. All right, so I've got yellow here. See that? Mm -hmm. I'm going to dilute that. I'm going to dilute that a whole bunch with turpentine until it's the consistency of vegetable oil, like cooking oil. And then I'm just going to plug that in. Sorry. All right, and see, it's very transparent. You can see through it. In fact, you can see my pencil lines, and that's not a bad thing. That's okay. Okay, so very translucent. Now, what's the great thing about complements? They make the other color darker. They make the neutral. Lighter. Yeah, they make neutral tones. So I can blend my violet and my yellow and get a darker tone without having to use black, and it's more natural. So I've got violet already mixed up right here. I'm going to take violet and I'm going to mix it into my yellow, and you'll see that that becomes a very dark, rich tone. I'm going to dilute it just a smidge. Probably not that much. All right. And then I can come over here to where my dark value is. Um, the light source is coming from this direction, so it's going to be darker on the back side. And I can just start adding that in there. Okay. I'm going to take some of that off my brush so that I can blend the yellow and that neutral together. Okay, I can come back and wipe my brush off and grab some white. And I can actually grab the white without diluting it. It creates a really nice effect. And gives us a stronger blend. On the, surf on the top of that, I'm going to add quite a bit of white. All right, and there it is. So very transparent, but very subtle at the same time, okay? And it's neutral. Remember when I told you that most of the time uh, the uh, indirect method will lend to neutral tones? You can see that happening here. It started really rich, and then it neutralized quite a bit. So that's okay. All right, next one, impressionistic. Um, impressionistic is kind of like stippling, okay? Um, and I did not do the whole background here for you guys just because I didn't ha I w wouldn't have enough time. Um, but uh, I'm going to do, uh, I'm doing a split complement. Uh, so I'm doing my red, yellow, green, and blue, green. I haven't gotten to my blue, green, but I have gotten to my yellow, green, which I've started here. Um, basically, guys, just mix your, um, mix your color in its thickness. Mix your hues in, your, in its thickness. I'm doing this yellow, green. And remember, you don't have to do a lot of mixing on the palette. You can come over here and just start plugging colors directly in, and you're stippling it. Grab more as you need it, and just pop it in. It should have lots of texture. It should have lots of color that is blending, that, that um, is being blended by the eye, rather. Okay, now let's pick a shape to do. How about we do, let's do this cone back here. So I'm going to do the cone. I'm going to take this red tone. I'm going to grab a decent amount of my red, and I'm just going to start stippling that in. The ends on this are going to be a little bit loose, and that's okay. If you remember looking back at Monet, um, Monet's haystacks that we looked at, remember his ends were very loose, they were not tight. Okay, now I can come in with my come in with my black. 
my shaft, my light is coming from this direction, which means my darker area will be on the right side. And I'm just plugging that in. I'm being very loose with it. I'm not spending lots of time. Come grab some white. Start in on this side. If you need to grab more of your pure color to beef up the center, go for it. And there it is. It's as simple as that. Okay? It should be loose. It should feel very um, stippled. Okay? And then, last but not least, that's impasto. We're not using a paintbrush. We're just using a palette knife. Okay? Got my palette knife right here. I'm going to be doing um, a a um, triad. I'm going to be doing my green, violet, and orange. And I have not mixed up any orange yet, so bear with me while I do that. Is this the one where it gives that texture? Yes. Oh. Okay, so I'm, I'm mixing up some thick orange. Okay. And I'm grabbing that orange. And I'm actually going to grab it with a little bit of red. Which one should we do? Let's do... Pyramid. Yeah, let's do the pyramid. Alright, so my um, dark value, my dark values will be on the back end. Light values will be on the front end. But I'm just going to start by adding all this texture in here all over. Guys, this is not going to be pretty and it's not going to be pristine. It's going to be thick and goopy and it's going to feel like you don't have a lot of control, which you don't. Just move it around. Look at that. Just move it around. Shift it, move it, push it, pull it. Okay? I'm going to take some white and mix in over here with some of my red, this orangey, reddish orangey tone. And I'm going to start adding that in up here on the front. It's really just dragging the paint around. Okay. If I need some darker value on the black on the back, then I'll just grab a little bit of black here and start working it in. Okay. And it's as simple as that. Okay. If I can see right now, I want some more pops of white. So I'm just going to go in there and just pop them in. Look at that. Boom. It should be loose. It should feel that way. You can see here how thick my green is. You can see here how thick my orange is. That's what we're looking for. Does everybody kind of feel like they have a better understanding of, of how these look and how they apply? Okay. All right. So um, I'm going to... Stop my recording.